Welcome back to the Webbing O'Neill channel. Plenty of Manchester United news to get through today, including Jason Wilcox. The latest update is that he's resigned from Southampton, but Southampton are unwilling just yet to release him from his contract. We're going to get stuck into that and also some updated reports on Mason Greenwood. Apparently, Manchester United have already triggered an extension in his contract until June 26. We'll discuss that later in the video, so stay tuned for that one. But Southampton, they're really not happy the way Manchester United are conducting themselves here. No, Man United are in a rush and they don't seem to care who the upset another club upset we've had Newcastle now it's Southampton's turn uh, they, they are really kicking off the timing of it they're trying to get back in the Premier League eve of a game it's just chaos for them now uh, respected man Jason Wilcox at Southampton does a lot of good work by all reports but they are absolutely fuming yeah I'm not listen I'm going to be totally honest with you I don't know a lot about Jason Wilcox I don't really read up on technical directors week by week at other clubs but when you do a quick search on Google like most of us does a lot of it does sound promising especially a lot of his work that he's done at Manchester City and some of the young lads that come through under his watch no it, it sounds promising right is he the best in class is he a competent I'm not too sure which one of them uh, he fits in my bill. But at the end of the day, United want him and they're going for him. You look at it, they have to get him in. They have to get damn that Ashworth in. <laughs> they're going for it. We need these people in place as quickly as possible to deal with what's going, out, or going on on the pitch. We have to make changes and these changes, these people coming in have to deal with transfers and they need to get in now. Yeah, uh, Tokyo Ted says in the chat, welcome to Gardening Club, Jason. Because it is getting to that point, isn't it, where, you know, with Dan Ashworth, how far how far away are we from actually getting him in at the club? He's currently on gardening leave. It could possibly end up where Jason Wilcox uh, ends up on gardening leave as well. And these people need to be in in the summer because there's lots of work to get done. Well, they've got to get them now. Forget the gardening leave, forget the summer. They have to have them in now. I just touched on it there. We've got to make transfers. We've got to get people out of the club. Mm. These are the people, the people what Man United have earmarked for that role. And they have to get in now and start the job. There's players there what need to be moved on, what have been there too long. Uh, there's just dead wood hanging about, just picking up wages. And the people like your Jason Wilcox, your technical director, and getting in people like your Dan Ashworth, sporting director, they have to be in place to start working. Now, there's not long to go. So, listen, click your fingers and it'll soon be there. The summer's here, the transfers are here. And at the end of the day, they have to be in place. So United, forget the gardening leave. They might be forced here to go out and pay it. You can see what Southampton are doing. Yeah. Southampton are thinking, ah, we'll jump on the bandwagon. We want compensation. We want his uh, contract paid up and we want more on top. At the end of the day, that's the way of the world. That's, that's the way it's going. Yeah, the latest reports there is like Jason Wilcox has actually resigned from Southampton, but they won't release him from his contract until they have agreed a fee with Manchester United. Apparently, Manchester United have offered to pay up a 12-month contract, his salary, but Southampton want a significant fee for that as well well on top of that so yeah they want a significant fee and like i say that that's the way it's going but you, you have to look at united's approach they're going to have to pay it no matter what mm. but behind the scenes you have to say come the summer everything's got to be in place so it's all about money this is what it is yeah, money again that that evil thing again money but the thing is players have to be moved on We've seen what's going on at United, and these players like you, uh, these people like Wilcox, have to be done it. Listen, United don't care who the upset, and I don't care who the upset. You have to get them in, and the rush is on, and get them in now. Yeah, I think there will be one or two more additions in that recruitment department yeah. as well. Uh, Josh Wilcox, by all uh, Jason Wilcox, sorry, by all accounts, is coming in as a technical director. Now, we already have one of them in Darren Fletcher, yeah. who's currently working at the club. And I've done a little bit of digging over recent weeks, any articles that have come up about Darren Fletcher. And over a month ago, the Telegraph stated and they've done an article that Darren Fletcher's title as technical director is actually misleading due to what he actually does at the club. The Telegraph suggests that it does not reflect his role at Manchester United as he has been coaching and acting as the first team liaison. So, will Gar well, Darren Fletcher, sorry, I was going to say Gareth Southgate, still have a role to play at Manchester United just because Jason Wilcox is coming in as a technical director? I think it's easy to get rid of Darren Fletcher. Uh, jack of all trades. 
That's how I see Darren Fletcher. I don't think he's had a permanent uh, job uh, focusing on that, focusing on that, focusing on that. He just seems to be a jack of all trades, and that's what we seem to have. I've said it many, many times about people inside Manchester United. They just look after themselves. Uh, they're not really worried about the long-term future of Manchester United. And Darren Fletcher seems to have floated round this football club like many others have, all right? and they need to be getting out. Uh, because if he says, I do this job, I might be doing this job, it's just filling in. That's all it is. We don't want that. We want people committed to a specific job. And Darren Fletcher does not have a specific job, in my opinion. So Jason Wilcock comes in, takes that role. That leaves then Darren Fletcher, oh, picking up more slack somewhere else. Don't think so. We have to get the right people in. And I don't think Darren Fletcher and many others in the back room are the right people. And United will carry on bringing people in, which is good. They are in, as I say... They're in a rush and it needs to be done. I'm getting the opinion you mean jack of all trades, but good, good at actually none of what he does. But that might not be Darren Fletcher's fault. It might have been actually down to the running of the club in the background and the people who have been running it, having people doing a variety of other things based on not what they've been employed to do. Them people what have employed Darren Fletcher, right, are out of this club. They're moving out of the club. They're getting took out of the club, mm -hmm. OK? There's a new structure coming in, OK? Darren Fletcher will not be in the eyes of the, the people what are running it. They will bring in their own people. And I've said it time and time again. But with again, Darren Fletcher going in to the first team, helping out with the first team, being yeah. a bit of a liaison, I know he does a lot of um, liaising with players who go out on loan. I've read lots of reports on that. He was always very close to Ahmad while out on loan at Sunderland, etc. But maybe there is actually a role for him there in the coaching setup at Manchester United. I don't know. You know, you've also got to think how highly does Eric Tenag think of Darren Fletcher in the coaching setup? I'm not too sure. Okay, I, I, you, I go back to your words, what you've just said there. Helping out. I don't want someone helping out. I want someone to be brought in who is best in class in the job. And if he's helping out in a role here, in a role there, like many others are, then they're not best in class. And Ineos have come in with Sir Jim Ratcliffe and said, we want best in class. We don't want someone who, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, we'll go and help out with them. Oh, go and help out with them. That's what we seem to have. People who aren't committed in a specific role. And there's many other roles to be cleared out with someone to be brought in. And the quicker, the better. We need it. But back in 2021, when Darren Fletcher come on board at Manchester United as this technical director, John Murto said in his new role, the first in our history, he will deliver technical advice across all aspects of the football department, as well as contributing to the communication delivery of our football philosophy across all areas of the club. Now, since 2021, I'm not too sure whether that job's actually been filled and it's been uh, successful for Darren Fletcher, as we say. Well, what he's saying about Darren Fletcher, this is what we've brought him in for, clearly hasn't worked. Mm. Clearly hasn't worked. It's now like there's no specific role for Darren Fletcher. Well, what's he doing there? Well, I think it, by the time the summer comes, I think his contracts will be paid up and he'll be moved out or he's preparing to move out anyway. Just like many other people in similar, smaller roles where they're not like doing the job proper. They've not got a specific aim. They've moved out. Lots of people have already been told they're moving out. Many of the staff here at Old Trafford have been told there will be big changes, cutting down on the costs and everything and the, the amount of people what are just in one role. Yeah. It just seems ridiculous because they're not best in class. It's like we're just having people helping out and that is no good for Manchester United. They're just aimlessly wandering and that's what Manchester United have been doing for the last 10 or more years, aimlessly wandering, trying to put, trying to put a plaster on a problem, right? It doesn't work. Uh, and the best in class is what we're being told, mm -hmm. what's coming into the club, and that's what we want. And we want the deadwood. And when I say the deadwood, the deadwood from all departments. And United are really looking for it, and they're moving quickly in the backroom department. The next move has to be in that in that squad, getting players out, bringing players in. Yeah, I was just going off that report on the website about Darren Fletcher when he first signed for Manchester United, just to try and get a gist of what Jason Wilcox might do here. And it, like it said in the report, it was technical advice across all aspects of the football department, contributing to communication and delivery of the football philosophy across all areas of the club as well. So that's a kind of a gist of what he's going to be doing here, Jason Wilcox. Yeah, it'd be part of his role. Uh, one of his roles is dealing with like transfers and all 
all that. He's got a lot of information and a lot of dealings from the reports I've seen with agents and everything, which will help. And I think Dan Ashworth there, mm. working underneath him, I think that's that's the role he's going to be doing. Yeah, Dan so, Ashworth will be above him as a sporting director. Yeah, yeah I think he'll be working along with him. And, and I think this is part of Dan Ashworth sort of saying, this is who I want to work underneath me. So things are moving along on the sideline. That's how I, that's what I read into it. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I would think Omar Barada, to be honest with you, has got a heavy influence in Jason Wilcox at their time at Manchester City. Yeah. To be quite honest with you, he'll be well aware of what the type of person he is and what he can deliver within the football club. Yeah, they'll all, they, they, listen, I've, I've said it time, time and time again. I think they'll have all sat round, and that includes the manager. That includes the manager round the table, trying to find the right people to put yeah. in the right spot. So I think lots of different people have had lots of different opinions. And what it's come down to is Jason Wilcox. Uh, and at the end of the day, he was a great footballer uh, at Blackburn, great winger. I enjoyed him. And I just hope he turns that spirit of being a good footballer into uh, a good, uh, what's the name of it here at Man United? Yeah, what are you saying about that? Jam United said in the chat, he can play left wing, can't we get him back on the left wing? when gear at Manchester United. It's an option. It's maybe an option. Yeah. Maybe an option in the summer, you never know. Yeah, Jason Wilcox, his time at Manchester City, though he began working at Manchester City as an academy coach back in 2012, promoted to academy director in 2017, with the likes of Phil Foden, Cole Palmer, Rico Lewis and Oscar Bob, all passing through the first team under his watch as well. So some decent talent there, what you'd like in your first team. Yeah, great understanding of uh, young, young talent. It looks as though uh, he's worked with some really good young talent and that's what we've got at Manchester United proper talent coming through they're winning the games they're just they, they, like I say they are just flying through that uh, young young team under 18s under 23s and he's worked with some crackers so at the end of the day he's walking into somewhere where there's already a pool of talent and he can help bring them on John Murto though still here there's no noise whatsoever about Murto leaving his role as football director so do you expect Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Ineos, Manchester United, whoever you want to call it, to actually keep him in his role, find another role for him in the future? No, I, I think he'll go. Uh, I think he's just here now, uh, just doing the bits of work, getting the... Do you think he will actually be phased out once we get the likes of Dan Ashworth in? I think he'll be straight out the door. There's no phasing out here with John Murto. I think, in my opinion... I think he will be straight out the door. He is culpable, right, as part of the team behind the scenes running this football club and he has overseen disaster after disaster after disaster, right? And I will be shocked if he is still here by the time that season starts again next year. Oh, yeah. Abs I'll be absolutely shocked. You can't have somebody who has overseen failure, failure, disappointment, disappointment, wasting money, paying for things you should not be paying for. I know, for. but I've yeah, got, no, I've got to be honest, so you've got to look on the other side of the fence. It's, it's not been John Murto's role to pay a certain amount of transfer fees for certain players. That's not been his, his role. He's not the chief negotiating officer no. for transfers. Yes, he's the football director, so he will play a massive part in recruitment of players. But then you've also got to look at the flip side. A lot of you out there who watched the academy football at Manchester United, especially over the last two to three years, the recruitment in that area has been very good. And if you look at a lot of the these young stars or young Manchester United players hopefully will be stars they look promising for the future and that's all been under John Murto's watch so should we not give a bit of credit there let me know what you think I'm just trying to give another side of the argument here no it comes down to failure right and failure is what I see on the pitch uh, in transfers and everything out the direction in the first team I totally get that yeah, yeah. In, in the direction right this football club's gone he has been part of the conversation and he has spoken up Many, many times he goes out, he negotiates. We've seen that. We've seen it this year. He, yeah, you know, he's, no, no, but what I'm just saying, we've seen what he does, the role he does. And it, it, it is inadequate as far as I'm concerned. And I, I, will, I do believe he will be out. And more people like you, Jason Wilcox, who are highly respected in their field, will be coming in to replace people like Murto. You have to get rid of mm -hmm. everything. And I think that's what uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's idea is. And like I've said many, many times, that part of the idea of getting rid of everything could include the manager. Yeah, there's a lot of people in the chat. They're not really disagreeing about John Murto. Uh, Leco says it's staggering. Murto is still there. The biggest disaster at the club for years, along with Woodward. Martin Kinsella says, get him gone. Disaster, disaster, exactly. 
So yeah, there's a lot, a lot of people in there, apart from them as well, saying that John Murso should leave. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, they're annoyed, uh, and quite rightly annoyed. The people who have been running this club have let us down badly. Uh, they've, they've not spoken, uh, no, they've not worked for long term like a five or a ten year project which used to happen 30, 40 years ago. That's how it was, looking for a long term project. This is what we aim for. John Murto's overseen part of this and it's not been a long term project. Mm. And like I say, I go back to people like Murto, uh, Arnold and all that lot. What they've done, they've just looked yeah. after themselves for short term gain and we're the ones what have suffered with all the pain. John Murto, though, he did have a huge hand in bringing Eric Ten Hag to the club. You can do what you want. OK, you can try and convince me, you can try and cajole me right, into looking at it from a different angle. And I think you'll be hard pressed for the people out there to be cajoled, to be cajoled right, and work towards what you're trying to do, which is, you know, devil's advocate, which you understand. Murto out for me. I'm so strong on it because he is part I've of the I've never actually problem. ever heard you have actually say them words about anything. Like Myrtle out. <laughs> no, no, because I'm so strong on it. Would you like a banner? No, I'm in the so background strong. Every time we're filming, like Myrtle out. <laughs> yeah, Myrtle out, yeah, yeah. Get it tattooed on my forehead, right? The reason why I'm so strong about Myrtle being out is because Sir Jim Ratcliffe's come in. He's took over the football strategy, okay? And for it to succeed, I see they all have to go in the background. They have been an utter disgrace. And like I say, Jason Wilcox coming in. Fresh air, breath, uh, breath of fresh air. That's what we want. Mm. We can't have someone hanging around like Murto picking up money, right? He's not best in class what he does. He's been given that role, then he's upped himself, then he's gone to something else, then he's gone to something else, at just some, like Darren Fletcher yeah, has. It, it looks like at some points that, yeah, and I do agree with that with Darren Fletcher in the past round about that. I think it was a 2015, 2016, Mike. It seemed like both of them jumped ahead of other people with inside the football club who had better knowledge than they did, especially yeah. ex-footballers who used to play for Manchester United, yeah. who were currently there at the time, like your Nicky Butt, etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's why they've got to go. They are not best in class. They are just jack of all trades. Mm. That's how they seem to have come yeah. through the ranks. They've not come through the ranks because of their greatness and they've done this or they've done that. It's a, They've overshot other people who were doing good jobs. And like you mentioned, Nicky Butt. Yeah. Nicky Butt was doing an excellent job yeah. by all accounts. Uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, I am Murto out. He has to go, right, for the sake of what's coming and what we need. He's got to go okay. and nothing will change my mind. And I very much doubt mm. you'll find people out there being cajoled by you, son, right, to turn around and say, oh, I think we need John Murto. No, we don't. <laughs> I didn't say them words that I we think, need John I Murto. I've I, just got to look at it from a different angle. I know Me you personally, have. from a, my own personal point of view, I do think Manchester United will go out and get another director of football to work below, like the sporting director, which is Dan Ashworth. You know, fingers crossed that does yeah. go through. And maybe even another person in there to fit another department, you know, run another box with inside the football club and maybe another technical director because maybe I think it's needed. You know, when you look at and you listen to Sir David Brailsford, he likes people working on certain departments, certain boxes yes. and running them boxes well. And yeah. I think it's needed there in United. Well, instead of like Darren Fletcher, who's been a jack of all trades, like you said earlier on. Listen, you've just said bringing in other people. Well, if you're bringing in other people, you have to remove people. No, I know I totally get that. And that's my only personal opinion. But yeah, yeah. I think John Murtaugh at some point will be phased out, you know, once the people like your Dan Ashworth do come in. I think possibly, you know, Dougie Friedman at Crystal Palace, he's been mentioned quite a lot as a director of football. And I'm not too sure whether Manchester United have given up on that just yet. You, that, that, that might come. We've just got to sit here, wait and see. But mm. what we need is immediate action. And we want Jason Wilcox in. We want Dan Ashworth in to do immediate action on this squad. Whittle it down, bring in players, and then just <laughs> restart. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, you've got to look at where the summer comes. And I'm talking about getting rid of everyone in the background. And, and I've said it before. They might already, Sir Jim Ratcliffe might already have plans who to bring in who to get rid of, and that may include, and we'll soon know whether it's going to be the manager. Just forgot there, Polofsky in the chat says, Rabiot's dad can't handle his mum. And if you do remember John Murto going out, was it in Turin, whining and dining, Rabiot's mum trying to convince her to get her son over here to Manchester United last summer. 
Then you've seen him, was it the summer before that? I forget, with all this Frankie de Jong saga, out in Barcelona with uh, Richard Arnold for well, a month or so, wasn't it? Well, Couldn't even you, get the deal over the line. You, if you look at Ravio, you look, you look at Frankie de Jong, absolute joke, embarrassing. And I did yeah. say to you, he's treating this club, right, to go on holidays, expensive holidays throughout the year, two weeks here, three weeks there. And I said to you, I actually thought at one time he was a resident in Barcelona. <laughs> he's, he's spent that much time there and he's gone back again this year you know what, 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 where's FaceTime yeah FaceTime Zoom and stuff like that give us a call yeah um, if you want I'll have a bit of a chat there's a few who's having a chat as well about the Chelsea game coming up on Thursday let me know your thoughts and feelings on that if you want to have a chat about that because uh, I'm expecting a bounce back I've got to be honest because we can't play as poorly as we did against Brentford because for me that was the bottom of the barrel that performance so we can only improve and go up surely <sighs> I'd like to think so. I mean, it's a huge game as well when you look at the two managers, both managers under pressure. Uh, I'd, listen, I'd like to think that we would bounce back after that humiliating performance, OK? I would like to think so, but I'm not too sure. I said uh, the other day, turned round and said, he's called them out, Eric Ten Hag. He's called the players out. And you've seen how this lot just throw everyone under the bus. They've been doing it for years at Man United. These players are so soft. They'll be crying, they'll be whinging. Oh, he's calling me out, he's calling me out. I didn't have desire, I've got desire. <laughs> it was only the other week that he's going on. I'm committed to Man United, Marcus Rashford. Yeah, of course, we're, of course you are, Marcus. You're committed to Manchester United for your wages, as many people are saying, because you're not committed on the pitch. Lots of other players weren't committed on the pitch the other day, and Ten Hag's called them out. Uh, so we are in yeah. a phase here where you just don't know what you're going to get. These players might just turn around and fully down tools. I think that might, might happen. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean when a manager does come out, but it's needed. I'd rather Eric Ten Hag do what he did after the game against Brentford and, and call it for what it is. You know, we did also have that side issue as well where he wasn't really concerned about the shots we were facing on goal, which did flabbergast me and it did shake me head and say a few choice words, to be honest, when I did hear that. But I think the other part of it about the lack of desire from the players, I'm fully on board with that. Yeah, but it might be too late. Might be too late to come out, you know, action should have uh, been taken way before. And as, as I've discussed, you know, what are you going to get at Chelsea? You've got players there, right? What are being picked, what you can see with your own eyes, aren't performing. And you have to ask yourself, why is Eric Ten Hag doing that? Uh, he's making some bad choices. He's coming out after the game the other day. Uh, and to be honest with you, he just looked a man shot. And it, a lot of it wasn't making sense. Yes, he called the players, no desire and all that. That was fine. I agree with that. But lo lots of it now is just like, sounds desperate. It, and it is desperate, yeah, yeah, to and, be honest And it's worrying you. you're looking at him as well. Yeah. He looks like he's aged 10 years in the near enough two years that he's been here. Yeah, but he's, he, looks, he, he looks as though... That's what he does with all the managers when you look back. Ole, Mourinho, Van Gaal, David Moyes. Near the end, they just look totally broken men. Yeah. And that's what that club has done to people as well. Yeah, but if you look at the Liverpool game, he looked fresh. After it, he looked like revitalised everything up for the challenge after the game. But how would fella. you feel as well? Because I, I, I know I would feel this as well. Totally let down by the players. You know, when you've been working on the training pitch all week, you know, on certain tactics, etc., and then you see a delivery like that from the players with a lack of effort, motivation, professional footballers. I'd, I'd, I'd have been... What, what, would I'd, you, what would he have done? What, what, what would have thought? I'd, I'd have struggled to keep my hands off him. Yeah. I, I personally would. And you've heard of players, managers fighting in the dressing rooms and all that, right? And that was a... I, it had been fully justified in grabbing people uh, and phys physically having a row with them uh, after that performance because there was no excuse for some of them players out there because they just... If someone lets you down like that, clearly in the eyes of the world, right, they're just saying, up yours. I think one of the problems is as well, I'm not too sure whether we've actually got any players in that dressing room who will point the finger, you know, we'll have it out with other players, you know, with a lack of performance, a lack of motivation, desire, what they've seen on the pitch, you know, to go around and point the fingers, get in the faces. Well, watching I think people what, just watch go back in the changing room and they just sit there and then it's just have a look at the mobile phone, see what the latest news is. 
watching on the pitch tells you there's no fight in the dressing room. Yeah. There's no one there. They're not fighting on the pitch. They're not talking to each other on the pitch. Yeah. There's no one remonstrating uh, with all the players or with the goalie or with the centre-half or with the centre-forward. There's no one remonstrating with that. All you've got is Bruno running around remonstrating it at the sky mm. and talking to the grass and talking to the referee. There is nobody remonstrating with anyone and that will go back to the uh, changing room. And that's what I said about Bruno the other day. You know, he's a captain, but he's not a captain because people aren't listening. Yeah, just going to go back into the chat because I found some positivity on Darren Fletcher. Mr Monkey says, got a feeling Fletcher getting a bit of a rough deal here. He has the United DNA and his experience as an academy product should go invaluable for the young lads coming through. Listen, I'm not saying he hasn't got United in him, OK? What I'm saying is he hasn't got, right, as I see it, OK, and many other people see it, the qualities to move Manchester United going forward. I have said that he is just a job's worth. Look, jack of all trades, OK? And he's quite happy to be moved from role to role and then back, back and forth. He has not been dedicated to a role in the last five, ten years at Manchester United. And that is the problem inside Manchester United. Listen, I know he's a nice fella, OK? I know he's a nice fella, right? But at the end of the day, sometimes nice fellas don't come first. And Darren Fletcher just seems to be in and around Manchester United. Oh, there's a vacancy there. We need someone. Right, get Darren. That's how it seems to me. And that's how the club is being run, like willy-nilly. Oh, fill in. Get him oh, to so, fill in. So, like, if you're in the office environment and someone wants to brew the boss, it's like, oh, Darren, can you go and get us a brew, mate? You know, well, the mornings. Well, it's, it's only like asking the tea lady to start painting the walls. We need the walls painting. Get her to do it. That, that's what it seems to be, instead of getting a painting and decorating him. But, hey, you know, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. It, th there might be more to Darren Fletcher, but I can only tell you what I hear, what I see, uh, and, the, and the jobs he does. To me, he is not number one in the, in the position, what he does. Basically, we want best in class, and you see other options out there that are better than Darren Fletcher to take this club forward. Man United are demanding best in class. Yeah. We, we're demanding now best in class. Ineos have come in with Sir Jim Ratcliffe and they've, they've promised to turn this round and get the best in class. We'll get everyone out who's, who's jack of all trades and who, who aren't good at the job and who have failed year on year. Get them out, bring the people in. And that's why Jason Wilcox got to be in now. Yeah. They've got to sort Manchester it out Manchester United week. haven't got time to bring the likes of, let's say, Darren Fletcher. Could be a great lad for all we know. Has got the Manchester United DNA, like someone said in the chat. But we haven't got time to have people learning on the job. We've got to have the best in class here right now to pushing the club forward we've got to push the club forward we've got to get the right people in now listen i've got to get to sleep i yeah. need the right people in yeah. place you know and if it doesn't work <laughs> it doesn't work i'll deal with it then but i'm i'm sick to death right of making excuses or looking at people mm. what are inside that club yeah. week in week out year after year picking up the wages these players have really set it alight now picking up wages, right, and not even prepared to do it on the pitch. They won't even put a bit of sweat in. Yeah, going to go into some news on Mason Greenwood. There was a report in The Athletic this morning, and it stated Getafe believe Manchester United have triggered the clause to extend Mason Greenwood's contract from 2025 to 2026. But Mason Greenwood would be reluctant, be reluctant sorry, to accept a change to rejoin MUFC's squad and he still has misgivings over the way the club handled his case. Well, I'll look at Gaddafi there first. I think Gaddafi, uh, I think what, what's happening there is, I think it's a lot of wishful thinking there by them. Uh, they're hoping to keep him on loan for another year. The mm. options there, they, they, they think the option's been triggered. But listen, I think Manchester United, when you look at it, they will be looking to sell Mason Greenwood yes. as soon as possible, right, and wash their hands of him. Right, just wash the hands of the whole situation. They want rid of it just the same as what they will do with Jaden Sancho. Yeah, well, they need to recoup some money in this summer to go and yeah, buy they some need plays to. this summer. Look, we don't know the exact figure with FFP, etc. But by all accounts, you know, things are pretty tight here at Manchester United from what you, what you believe. So they need to start recruiting some money. Yeah, they need to recruit some money. But I, I think what's more important uh, from Sir Jim Ratcliffe's point of view dealing with this, right, it's getting uh, that tarnish, that 
that oh that that bad thing what happened there out yeah. of the way i think that's more important first mm. to go forward yeah. i think the money side of it that'll take care of itself you know and you look at sancho that needs to be moved on as well so i think greenwood at the moment he's just talking i don't think he's really in a major position to sort of like deal with I want this and I want that. I think he will just go along with whatever comes out. I think United will look to sell him as quickly as possible if there's someone uh, in the summer what's there. They might already know and they might already be in contact with someone uh, who wants Mason Greenwood. That's the first thing I think United will be looking at, selling him, not loaning him out again. I think they just want, they want this pushed away, away from the club uh, and leave it with somebody else because, like I say, the, the, the washing there, it's smelling and they, they, they want to remove it. That's how I look at it. Uh, Mr Peach don't like the phrase best in class, laugh out loud. I do get what you mean. It's, you know, it is used pretty flippantly. I, I, I do get that, but... You know, you do have levels just like in most places in work, don't you? You know, like you have the top, the middle, the sort of the bottom and you have different classes. And, you know, when we say best in class, my own interpretation is, you know, the best out there to do the job effectively. And I do think in the sporting director's role, Dan Ashworth is definitely in that pool of people. Behind the scenes, you want best in class. You want them. You have to have them here at Manchester United. The size of Manchester United, the worldwide, everything, right, is massive. You need best in class. And let's get something straight. So Jim Ratcliffe says, I want best in class. Well, he's got to deliver yeah. on his promises. He's got to deliver on his promises on that pitch. He has said, three years, I'll turn this round yeah. and we'll have a win inside because I'm going for best. He deserves best in class, but what has to happen he has to perform Sir Jim Ratcliffe. He has to get rid of anything what isn't best in class. That's what we deserve. We've been starved of it for years now. That's where we have to get back to. And it's been promised us. So do not accept anything less than best in class. Because you're lowering your standards when the standards are on the floor. Okay? Best in class, what we deserve. That's what we've been promised. Yeah. I like that one, so I'm going to end it on that. Anything more, though, to add? No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I just want more people to come in and, and immediate action has to be taken to get these people in. Do you want more best in class? I want more best in class. I want more best in class and hopefully you out there want more best in class as well. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I'd just like to thank everyone for getting involved in the chat. If you've enjoyed it and you want to support the channel, please smash that like button. It helps us a lot. And we'll be back tomorrow with another Manchester United news video. So hopefully we'll see you there. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.